Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the iBaso IT-01X. Uh, so iBaso, a company, I think probably equally well known for their digital audio players as well as their IEMs, but this is in fact the first IEM from iBaso that I've personally had a chance to check out. And what the IT-01X is, it's a single dynamic driver earphone, pretty simple, 120 bucks, and Maybe if we're trying to make that single dynamic driver sound a little bit more special, they do describe it as double-sided beryllium coated, and they talk about something about the cavity inside, and I, I, I don't know really too much about that. But what I do know is I have been spending the past couple of weeks listening to the IT-01X and comparing it to some other IMs in its price range. Now, 120 bucks puts it in puts it in shot of some pretty stiff competition, and so what I've been comparing this to would be things like the File FH3, a little bit different driver configuration, but one of my favorites in that price range, as well as the brand new Moondrop Aria. Uh, you could also stand in the, the Moondrop Starfield if you wanted to, but yeah, that was kind of the, the competition that I had in mind for the IT-01X. So, like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. If you're watching now live, you got a question about the iBaso or anything else we talk about, leave it in the live chat, and at the end of the review, we'll have a little back and forth conversation, but I don't think I have much else to say. So let's just dive into the review of the IT-01X. And like we always do, we'll start with the physical stuff, what comes in the box, etc. Okay, so this is the box laid out for you. And it's actually a pretty compact box you can see, but they have managed to pack in a lot of a surprising number of ear tips, frankly. Uh, I did an unboxing video where I laboriously, laboriously, I shouldn't try to say that word live, uh, but I did laboriously lay out all these different tips and it's, I don't know, frankly, pretty shocking how many there are. So there are two sets of dark silicone ear tips that I've got up here, a little bit wider bore and then here kind of a, a, a more standard bore size. We've also got a set of white ear tips that are somewhat wide bore and then the set of really interesting, let me zoom in on these just so you can take a look. They've got like this spiral structure pattern on the inside, which is kind of cool. I'll be perfectly honest, I just stuck with the stock tips because I got a good fit with these and um, I just, yeah, I didn't do too much exploring. You do also, that's not all the tips, you you do also get a, a couple of pairs of foam ear tips and that is the very wide tip selection. Most of the times, like, you get maybe two different sets of tips. This is one, two, three, four, five, five different sets of tips. Frankly, it's a little bit overboard, but if you were interested in, you know, spending some time tip rolling and trying to get different sounds, you can get slightly different sounds by swapping out the tips. Although I wouldn't expect anything to be massively different. Uh, additionally, and in, in addition to the tips, they also included these filters, uh, which I was curious about. I assumed that initially these were like tuning filters. They're little screw-ins. Um, but I did actually do some testing with the, the frequency response measurement, uh, and it seemed like when I put these things on, they measured exactly the same as they did before, so I think it's just meant to be a spare set of filters in case your filters get clogged, which I guess is nice, and frankly, that's a lot nicer than the typical like stick-on replaceable filters and, and very easy to replace, I guess, so for that, uh, I guess that's, that's pretty cool, um, but also maybe a little bit confusing. Uh, you do also get this little carry case, which I think, you know, I've gotten these this type of carry case with some other IMs, and I think this is generally one of the better types. It's got a bit of a hard shell, kind of a hard plastic shell, almost got like a, an aluminum layer on the top. But generally, you know, it's a good size. It fits the IMs well, fits into a pocket really well, which is kind of important. But there you go, pretty decent little case. And so for 120 bucks, you get all that. And you, of course, get the IMs themselves, which will lead us into talking about the earpieces, the cable, and the general build quality. And I'm going to start by talking about this cable, which honestly, I think is a really nice cable. Maybe, maybe even calling it really nice is a little bit too much, but like, I really appreciate this cable. I feel like this, the cable that iBaso included here should just be like standard issue IAM cable. It's not too fancy. You know, you can tell that it's not obviously especially thick or anything like that. It's just a nice, simple, attractive cable. Uh, it behaves well, it lies flat. We'll give it the old roadie wrap so you can see how well it winds up. Um, just really, a, a. this is how I would love to be able to describe every cable as uh, completely normal and uh, no, just uneventful. There's there's not a lot 
like it's just a very nice and simple cable. I think one of the things that I do really appreciate about it though, is the fact that there is no excessive branding. In fact, you get a little bit of an iBASO logo down there, but otherwise you get relatively simple uh, Y split. And then you actually have a chin slider that functions. Like it actually stays in place pretty well without being overly stiff. So iBASO, really thank you for that cable. Uh, and again, I think like this should just be kind of like the bare minimum for an IEM, especially at around a hundred bucks. Uh, IEMs that come with worse cables, I don't know what's up. But that takes us to the earpieces now. And here's where, I don't know, I've got some mixed things to say. You know, first thing that you're gonna notice is the aesthetic here of the ITL1X. I gotta be honest, I don't love it. I think it is kind of, it looks cheap, if I'm perfectly honest. It does not look like a $120 earphone. Uh, it's made out of, it seems like an all plastic shell. Uh, and it's got this little piece inside that, I guess it looks nice-ish, but I'm not sure about the in-tune branding on there. It was kind of curious that iBaso seems to have a similar a similar aesthetic for a lot of their IEMs, including some stuff that's a lot more expensive. So maybe someone out there is more into it than I am. I'll just be honest. Like I think you know, the look on it is is just not my favorite. Uh, but the the build and the functionality of it is actually pretty good. So I'll, I'll take off the the tip so you can take a look at the nozzle. You know, it's not a super short nozzle, but obviously also not a very aggressive one. And then what that will also carry through to is just an overall really simple and unaggressive shape, obviously. This is just very small. And because of that, I find that it fits quite comfortably. Maybe not the most secure fitting I am because it's not kind of, it's not shaped like a lot of these semi-custom I am's. But of the three I am's that I'm talking about here, I do think this is actually probably the best fitting. It's just slides into my ear and I'll give you the uh, the close-up so you can take a look and you can see very very small uh, obviously it's not even taking up the entirety of my concha so if you are concerned about having small ears and fitting an IEM in them this is actually a pretty decent set for that um, but yeah generally you know security is pretty solid despite the fact that it's so small and not custom I'm pretty into that so physical stuff some mixed some mixed feelings about it honestly like it's a good fit a uh, really nice cable and uh, I just don't really love the look of it and I'll be honest like that does kind of color your perception and how much you want to like the sound of an earphone but that will lead us into talking about the sound signature here on the IT-01X. So I'll start just by kind of describing uh, the high level sound signature which generally I would describe as a bassy v-shaped sound signature um, and you know, there's when I just when I when I say V-shaped, typically what I mean is that there's going to be some bass emphasis, and there is. This is very much a bass emphasis headphone. Um, it's going to have probably some, you know, V-shape usually means some uh, emphasis in the upper mid range or treble region, which gives it like that contrasty sound, um, but maybe not necessarily a whole lot of mid range focus. And I think that's kind of, you know, a, a good description here of the ITL One X in that V-shape. Uh, a general description. There's still a lot of room for variability. So if I'm getting more specific, I would say that this is very much a mid bassy into sub bass uh, emphasis with not a lot actually of upper mid range. So some V-shaped sound signatures can be bass plus upper mid range. This one, not too much. So if you are allergic to shout, uh, not a word I usually like to use because I guess I'm sensitive, I like shout. Uh, but if you are allergic to shout, um, overly forward vocal region, the ITL1X is not that. What it does have instead to cut through that bass, rather than using the upper mid range in the vocal region, it uses kind of the lower treble region with some emphasis there that gives it a nice contrasty sound. And I think generally that's a good way to describe the ITL1X is it has just a really good sense of macro contrast, which is that big contrast that gives you, you know, a nice strong difference or definition between the highs and the lows. Um, but maybe not so much a focus on the, the, the micro details in between. So what I like about the sound here on the iBaso ITL1X, honestly, is that bass. Um, you know, you know me, I'm not necessarily the biggest bass head and, and bass is not typically what I'm going to prioritize in my sound signature, but I also recognize that I am not everybody else. And it turns out there are a lot of people out there that like bass and there's a lot of ways to do bass badly. 
the IT-01X I think has actually got pretty solid base for especially this price range at around 120 bucks to have this amount of kind of mid base emphasis. And if you take a look at it on a frequency response graph, it'll stand out to you. Um, but there's always the risk that that amount of mid bass is going to give it kind of this muddy, smeary sound in the mid range. And I honestly don't think that the IT-01X has that problem. I think this is, you know, it's, it's mid bassy and it's got a nice, a really, really strong sense of punch, a strong sense of, I would even use the word slam, uh, but it's got that bass punch to it. But honestly, it still maintains that overall macro contrasty sound that avoids it from sounding it, it muddy at all. Like I wouldn't just, I would not use the word mud at all to describe the bass here on the IT-01X. Um, the, you know, kind of to go along with that macro contrasty sound, I think the separation and layering here on the IT-01X is actually really well done. Um, it gives you a nice sense of space, um, a just really strong definition between the different instruments and their, their position in 3D space around my head. Um, like most IEMs, not necessarily a big uh, sound stage per se, but I do think that the imaging is actually pretty nice on this thing. And just overall, generally, I in did enjoy the, the broadly, what I'll describe, that contrasty, kind of a rich sound. You know, it's, it's a little bit warm tonally, but because of that lower treble, it prevents it from sounding kind of too laid back. Um, it's still a little bit, a little bit aggressive and for that, I actually, I actually kind of like that. Now, what I don't necessarily love about the sound on the IT-01X, well, we'll just start with the obvious, like tonal, my, my tonal preferences are not this. Um, and that's okay, like not every IM has to sound exactly like my tonal preferences. Um, this is probably just honestly an IM that's tuned more for folks out there that demand bass in their tune. And not that I don't like bass, it's not gonna be the thing I prioritize. And I do think that sound signature wise, the IT-01X prioritizes its bass. So it's just a bit more bass dominant than I generally prefer. And because of that, the vocals, because of the, the mid range not being especially forward, I do find that vocals kind of sound within the, the mix behind the bass. But again, for folks that are looking for that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just for me. Uh, and then the other thing that I'll mention that I don't love here is the treble tuning. It is a little bit sharp in my experience. Um, you know, it does give it a decent sense of definition that cuts through that mid bass and again, prevents that muddiness. But I found that the, the treble emphasis here, um, just, it can be a little bit on the fatiguing. It can be a little bit, a little bit sharp, a tad sibilant from time to time. And things like cymbals can come across a little bit too splashy. So maybe it was a bit of a, a necessary, um, a necessary sacrifice to deliver that amount of mid bass, but for for my preferences, I did find that the, uh, the, the the treble tuning was just a little bit on the sharp side. So that's broadly what I think about the iBaso IT-01X, but how does it stack up against some other IMs in the price range? And we talked about them already. So let's go ahead and slide them into view and maybe I'll go ahead and slide this stuff out of view. So we got more room. What are you doing, bud? Your show's over. Uh, let's go ahead and move this stuff out of the way and slide in the competitors here. So obviously we've got the iBaso IT-01X. Here we've got the Fio FH3. And then here we've got the new Moondrop Aria, which you could also stand in the Moondrop Starfield because honestly to me, I can't really hear a difference. So how do these things stack up? And I'm just gonna go through a handful of categories that were kind of important to me, things that stood out, but obviously you make up your own mind. In terms of just general tonality, the general tuning of these IMs, I would probably say the FH3 is my favorite, uh, followed by the Aria, followed by the IT-01X, right? The FH3 tonality is just a much stronger mid-range focus. Um, and I'm a bit of a, you know, for the, in the same way that some folks are really into their bass, I'm kind of into my mid-range. And I think that the, the tuning here in the mid-range is just really nice, flat and even um, and, and for that much, I like it, but it also does have kind of that party trick of the sub bass, which I think works really well as a complement to uh, the tuning here on the FH3. Uh, the next, I would say the Moondrop Starfield or the, the Aria here is just kind of a tried and true tonality. It's 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 a little bit warm, a little bit mid bassy with some vocal forwardness. Like here, I'd describe this being 
um, not too vocal forward. This is more treble forward. This is more on the vocal forward range. And generally I, I find that a little bit more pleasing. The, the mid range just comes through a little bit stronger here on the Aria. Although I do find it a little bit, a little bit too warm and laid back for me. And then the iBaso ITL1X, very much a, a V-shaped sound signature gives you a lot of that mid bass punch uh, that can frankly be a lot of fun, but the, at the expense of the mid range. And that's kind of how I've got these things lined up. You know, I could have another category. In fact, I do have another category talking about mid range detail and I'll just leave them in basically this exact same order. I think the FH3 has kind of got the best micro contrast in the mid range. And part of that's probably going to be, you know, due to the fact that it is tuned the way that it is as flat as it is um, through those mids but also potentially, you know, it, this has got balanced armatures handling the mid-range and the treble, so it's a little bit different there. I think the mid-range, you know, it's got some decent micro contrast, probably the better timbre of the three of these. Um, definitely better timbre here than, than what you get on the FH3, but um, not quite as much micro contrast and detail that I think you get with the FH3. And then the mid-range here is just definitely not the emphasis on the ITL1X. It's not necessarily a bad mid-range, um, again, I think the, the treble sharpness is probably the biggest complaint I would lob at the ITO1X, but um, the, the mid-range is just definitely not the focus. Now, if we talk this, we flip this around and talk about bass specifically, this is where it gets a little bit more contentious. Uh, and I think a lot of people would frankly disagree with my ranking, but I'm gonna go ahead and just swap these two. I think the FH3 bass is a really, Mm, I love the bass on the FH3, but it's very much focused in the sub bass frequencies, which means you get that really nice sense of rumble. It adds a nice sense of depth to the sound signature. But if you're listening to music that doesn't have a lot of sub bass, if you're listening just like, I don't know, like a typical rock recording or something that's got kick drums and bass guitar, that stuff isn't necessarily going to get picked up by the, the bass tuning here on the FH3. And in that case, you might actually prefer the bass here on the ITO1X, which has got more of that mid bass emphasis. Um, honestly, no slouch here in the bass. You could probably make the, a pretty good argument that these are roughly comparable in terms of bass quality. Um, but for my preferences, you know, I'm kind of letting the, the tonal balance also influence my opinion here. I would say the ITO1X is one step down, not quite as sub bass focused, definitely not as sub bass focused. Um, but it does have a really nice sense of punch and slam and again, really no issues with it bleeding into and smearing up the mid range. And then finally that will leave the Aria for last. I think the bass here is pretty well done. Like I think the bass levels and tuning are, are about in line with where I'd love them to be. But I do find it to be a little bit on the soft and kind of wooly side, especially in comparison to these. Um, it's more mid bassy than the FH3, not quite as mid bassy as the ITO1X, but I do think that even though the ITO1X has got more mid bass, it still, it still keeps it separated and better controlled than the Aria bass. Uh, and then finally, no, well, no, actually I've got a lot of categories. Wow. This is, this is, this is a special treat for myself, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, treble quality. Um, I might switch this up a little bit. I think the Aria probably has the best quality treble, although if I'm perfectly honest, like none of these have outstanding treble, which is just kind of a common theme in, you know, sub $300 earphones. There's, it's hard to do treble really well. Um, and I would say none of these really excel in the treble, but if I'm ranking them, I would probably rank them like this. I think the Aria, you know, it's maybe a little bit wispy in the, the high frequency treble stuff and maybe a little bit boring through the rest of it, but doesn't have a lot of issues. Like it doesn't have issues with sibilance, not really fatiguing. Generally, I would say the treble in here is pretty decently done. Uh, next up I would say is the FH3, which this is where the, the FH3 is probably its strongest or its biggest weakness is in the timbre of the treble. It just comes across a little bit on the plasticky side, partly because of that balanced armature, I guess. Uh, but it can also be a tad sharp and a tad sibilant depending on the track you're listening to. Uh, and then finally, I'll leave the ITO1X here, which does kind of give you the, the, the sharpest sense of that treble, the most contrasty, um, but it also can become a little bit splashy and a little bit sharp with vocals, I found. Now, in terms of imaging, like that 3D sense that you get with, sat with, with, a, with a, a really nice earphone and kind of like one of the things that makes listening a lot of fun for me, Here's how I'd rank them. I would say the FH3 is probably the top 
of imaging department followed by the IT-01X and then with the ARIA and last. Again, you could probably make an argument to put these either on equal footing or maybe even put this the, the IT-01X a little bit ahead just because of how well it does with that sort of macro contrast sense. Again, it just puts instruments in really good 3D space. But I do find that I like the way that the FH3 does it better, especially with that sub bass. The ARIA imaging 3D sense, not necessarily its strength, same issue with the star field. So that's why I've got it here at the end. And finally, if I'm just kind of ranking these overall in terms of my, my overall preferences, and, and this is very vague, but this is this is roughly how I would rank them. I think the FH3 just does a lot of things really well. Again, treble, not necessarily what it does the best, but it's not super offensive in the treble, and I love the mid-range and I love the bass. The Aria, this is just kind of like an all-arounder. Um, doesn't really do anything that wrong. It's just maybe a little bit boring, but it's unoffensive. And then finally, I'll leave the ITL1X here, which you know, it's in third place out of three, but don't let that come to mean that I'm, I don't like the, the ITL1X. I think this thing is a lot of fun, frankly. It's just totally not my preference. Um, but if I'm looking for a bassy set and I'm looking for a nice sense of that macro contrast, the ITL1X is pretty solid for that. So that is gonna be my review of the iBaso ITL1X. And out of five stars, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a solid three stars. You know, and, and three stars for me kind of, it kind of, it's a pretty broad category of IMs that I respect but don't want to listen to necessarily, or maybe I do like them for different reasons. And I think the ITL1X kind of falls into that latter bucket where this thing is actually quite a bit of fun to listen to. Um, it's probably not one I'll be going back to for myself because I'm just not that much of a bass guy. But for a lot of folks out there, I know a lot of folks that are probably familiar with iBaso. You're looking for bass, and I think this actually does deliver pretty solidly on that mid-bass punch without coming out the expense of the rest of the sound frequencies. So that is my review. If you're interested in checking out the iBaso IT-01X, of course, I got a link in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, you liked it, whatever, you're having fun, you're just hanging out, and maybe, maybe you got a good drink or something. If your drink is really good, please hit the like button down below. It actually helps me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ding the YouTube bell. And then I'll catch you in the next super review. And if you're here live, we'll hang around and we'll have a little chat. All right, live stream crew. Let me catch up with chat a bit. And if anyone has any questions about the ITL1X, how it compares to maybe something else that I haven't talked about, leave that in the live chat and we'll, uh, we'll have a little conversation. Let me grab a sip of tea. It's a masala chai tea, if you were wondering that. Here in an Ajuna Deep, nice to see you there. Thanks for joining. Susiban, nice to see you as well. Muhammad Ravi saying the new waiting screen is dope. Cool, glad you like that. Yeah, I um, I did that stuff this weekend. I can't remember exactly how it came up, but someone, maybe it was, maybe it was VB had said something about liking the yellow in my, in my graphics. And I was like, yeah, I like the yellow that I chose with my colors, but for some reason, the blue that I chose in, I did, I do all my graphics in like Adobe Illustrator. When I export it from Illustrator or from Photoshop, it was like resulting in different colors and different hues of blue. And I, didn't love some of them and I wasn't really sure like what even is the super review blue. So that was a problem that I wanted to solve this weekend. And so I spent this weekend in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and Adobe Premiere um, exporting and kind of just creating a new asset package. Nothing complicated and not that much of a, a graphic designer, but um, basically just wanted to get all that in line. And the side effect of that is that we've got a new waiting screen. So glad you like it. Gunnar Jones, hiya, nice to see you there. You're asking, do I ever use the N3 Pro to test the different sound signatures of these? And the answer is yes, I don't have the, so the N3 Pro is a KN uh, audio player, MP3 player, digital audio player, DAP, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's one I reviewed late last year, I wanna say, and it is still one that I use today. And I don't have it here because it's out in my living room actually, um, but that's the one I was listening to actually just last night. Um, 
for the most part, honestly, most of my audio players, I consider them just to sound the same. There might be like very minor differences if I'm listening really, really hard, but I don't, I don't usually take those differences into consideration when I'm evaluating earphones because the difference between the earphones, let's say like the, the difference between uh, the Fio FH3 and the Ibeso ITL1X is a scale of 10 points of difference. Um, the difference between one audio player to the other is like maybe a half a point of difference. And so if I'm using an audio player to compare different earphones like that maybe half a point of, of differentiation just i find pretty insignificant so hopefully that answers your question i do still use it though because i like i like the look of it i like the feel of it in the hand i like that it gets warm i like that it's got that tube option which does actually change it um that does change the sound more than 0.5 of a differentiation point but yeah Uh, Muhammad Arabi is saying you should make tips video for tips, tips on tips, general discussion style stream. Interesting. Yeah, there's definitely a lot that you could talk about with ear tips. Um, obviously, the, the iBaso came with quite a few different ear tips. Um, and usually when I'm reviewing earphones, I will stick to the stock ear tips unless there's a problem. Um, but when I decide to, you know, essentially live with an earphone, when an, when an earphone is sort of graduated from the review to now I'm not reviewing it, but I just kind of want to listen to it. That's when I'll start experimenting more with ear tips, especially if, I don't know, there's kind of two things that you can address with ear tips. Uh, the number one, and I think this should be the number one priority for most people, is the fit. Uh, different ear tips will fit your ears differently. They'll have different like shapes. They'll have different grip levels that you know will, will stay in place depending on the, the grip quality of the, the material. You've got foams versus silicones, which have different properties. I, I generally don't like foams because of how much work they are to put into the ear. But yeah, so there, so I guess the point there was that the, the primary reason that I choose tips is for the fit. Now, tips can also affect the frequency response. Although I find that generally, the difference between tips is a little bit overstated, at least uh, in my experience. I have been recently measuring the, the effect of swapping ear tips, and this is kind of a, a good way to get a sense for what a tip might do when you swap it on. But, and if you're interested in checking that stuff out, I do actually have um, a lot of those frequency responses on squig.link, where you can take a look at something like uh, the Tanch Johanna and see what it looks like, how it measures with various different types of tips. But Mostly that will affect frequencies, I find kind of like past 4,000 Hertz. And at that point, you're kind of, you're more dealing with the, the way that the, the IEM will fit inside of your ear and less so the effect of the tip itself and like, you know, the, the bore size of the tip or any other, or the, the, the character of the, the material, whether it's silicone or foam. Mostly you're really just kind of at that point engaged in ear anatomy uh, manipulations of the, the sound frequencies, because if you take an, a, the same earphone, right? Let's say you have an earphone that fits you and you've got, you know, let's just say even the stock tips for the iBaso in a large, and let's say it fits me, but if I wear a small, it, it still fits me, but maybe it fits in deeper. The fact that it's fitting in deeper is gonna matter more than the fact that it is or isn't a different style of ear tip. Um, but yeah, I guess to your point, there is probably a lot to talk about with ear tips. And if I put some thought into making it a little bit more co coherent, um, that could be a decent video, yeah. Das Ninja Stick saying it almost has a 90s look. And yeah, I kind of agree with that. I think the, uh, the ITL1X does look a little bit, a little bit retro 80s 90s uh, let's go over here and take a look i what do you think about it like i think the color scheme is kind of cool i like the red and the purple um, and maybe if maybe if the word in tune wasn't so large i might be a little bit more attracted to it but i don't know it just it feels a little bit like something that uh it feels a little toy like maybe is a way to say it Don Trumpion and Cheebs, nice to see you. A couple of folks from 
the Discord chat, as well as some others I've talked about already, DOS Ninja Sticks included. Rinaldi saying, got my notification right after you woke up. It's still 4.30 a.m. Wow, 4.30. Uh, what was I doing at 4.30 a.m.? I was sleeping. I was sleeping, yeah. But good on you for waking up that early. I wish... I think I wish I had that ability. I usually wake up around 6 a.m. Uh, but you're saying, so Aria can still contend with these even though it's sub $100? And yeah, I mean, I think if you go back to my review of the Moondrop Aria... I compared it with Moondrop Starfield, which is priced more in line with these. The Starfield is around 120 bucks. I honestly, I have a really hard time making out any difference between this and the Starfield. As far as I'm concerned, they're essentially the same earphone. This, just the Aria cost 80 bucks. Um, so basically all of the strengths of the Aria, I would, or of the Starfield, I would attribute to the, the Aria as well. And then all of the weaknesses of the Aria you could also attribute to the, the more expensive Starfield. Uh, Rank and Ninja saying, kind of sad they moved away from the ITOO, ITO1S shell. Those are pretty comfy. Yeah, honestly, like, I mentioned that the ITO1X is the first iBaso IM that I've personally heard, but I have been familiar with them. I've seen them in, 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 in the internet spaces, and this look was not what I was expecting with the ITO1X. But then also when I looked around their website, I was, again, I guess kind of surprised that a lot of their IMs seem to be using this look now. I don't know if it's just a different direction for them or if it's a particular sub brand or like a, a sub design of what they're going for i'm not sure but yeah i don't know if they're deciding between the old style that i've only seen in pictures i haven't actually worn it so i don't know if it's comfortable but if i'm just based on aesthetics i would say i think the older ones look a little bit nicer than this honestly das ninja stick saying party trick sub base is where it's at and i kind of agree that's um the, the file FH3 has got a pretty strong sense of sub bass, which if I was just looking at the graph, I might say, ooh, that's too bassy for me. But in listening practice, because it's so well isolated, the sub bass, listening to certain music that has that sub bass emphasis, something like FKJ's Blessed, or uh, there's a track that I really like to use for testing sub bass um, by an artist named Julieta. The track is called, ooh, is it called Runaway, I want to say? Um, it's just got this really satisfying uh, sub bass thump, and it, the, the FH3 really does it quite well. Cheap saying they should change it to the iBasey. That's not a bad idea. Are you in marketing? Tom Herbert asking, what is the natural upgrade to the Aria? And that's an interesting question. I mean, Moondrop has uh, a number of IMs that have similar sound signatures that cost more, which you might think would be upgrades. So like the Moondrop Starfield we talked about costs an extra 40 bucks on top of this. Um, but again, I can't really hear the difference. So I wouldn't necessarily urge you to spend money on that. They've also got the KXXS which I think was the IM that kind of started this whole chain of um, this, this whole product line of Starfield, Aria, KXXS was kind of the original. And that's around 180 bucks, very similar tuning, if not identical tuning. And I have not spent a lot of time with the KXXS, so take this with a grain of salt, but based on memory, it just, it really did sound like a Starfield to me. So like they've got kind of these three IMs at three different price ranges that all have nearly identical tuning and as far as I can tell kind of all sound the same so I again like it might look like an obvious upgrade to, to stick within the same family line and get exact same tuning but I can't really think of a strong reason why unless you just really like the look of the more expensive IMs which you might want to consider however would be something like um, the Tantium Oxygen which has got a very similar tuning. It's got, you know, kind of a warm, 
mild V shape with a, a decent bass emphasis, some vocal emphasis, but not too much. Um, the Tantrum Oxygen, I think, has got a very similar tune to things like the Aria and the KXXS, but I think is next level in terms of that definition, the depth, and the imaging quality. Um, but you also might want to hang around and wait around for my review of the new Tanshjim HANA. So last year, a little under a year ago, I reviewed the Tanshjim HANA and that was kind of like Tanshjim's version of the, the KXXS to Starfield. It was, there's like the, the oxygen and then they released the HANA, which looks a lot like the oxygen, but actually had a pretty different tuning, um, a lot more forward. And some people didn't like that. So the HANA ended up not being the Starfield, Tanshjim's Starfield. Uh, because of the tuning was different but they have just recently released the 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 new hana like a 2021 version uh, which I actually just got in yesterday and just based on the frequency response it looks like it's tuned just like the oxygen so there might be now a sub 200 dollar um, recommendation that's got this tuning. I haven't spent enough time listening to it, so I can't rate, make that recommendation right now, uh, but definitely stick around and stay tuned because that review will be coming pretty soon. Uh, Sue Saban asking, have I ever considered modding the blonde BLO3 and doing a review in it? No, I haven't. No, I haven't done any mods on the, the BLO3. I think I've like tried different cables and I've tried different tips, mostly just out of comfort to see. I talk about this a lot of the times, right? It's like how the IM looks and how it feels, how comfortable it is to wear, how much of a pain in the butt the cable is or isn't. All of this stuff like impacts my, how much I enjoy the product. And so like a lot of the times if I listen to something and maybe I don't love it initially, I try to address those things and see maybe maybe I'm just really kind of subconsciously responding to the fact that this cable is a pain in the butt and uh, I don't want to listen to it because of that. So I did spend some time, you know, toying around with the, the Blonde BL-03 like that because uh, the stock cable on the L-03 is, is, is pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, but apart from that, and those things don't really impact the sound at all. No, I haven't really played around with, with modding it. Um, Honestly, I think the BLO3 is a good sounding IM. I never did do a review of it. And part of that is just because I didn't get around to hearing it until about a year after people were, were interested in the review. So I didn't think there was a need to review it. And, and for that reason, I never did. Um, but I think it's a pretty solid set. Oh, and you said changing the mesh on it is, is a mod. and. No, I mean, what, I'm kind of curious. It sounds like this is a thing you have experience. What is, what is the expected result of changing the mesh on the BL-03? Like I would expect you might be tweaking the, the treble performance a little bit. And on honestly, like I think the treble on the 03 is about in line with where you would want it on a tune like that. Um, it's a little bit forward, but it's not overly aggressive and it cuts through the mid bass and I don't know. I, I, I don't know that that's a thing that I would personally go after. Um, if I were trying to tune the O3 to be exactly what I wanted, like first thing I would do is try and cut like the mid bass or something, but you're not going to do that with the mesh. At least I don't think so. Casey Dunn asking, what are the best sub $500 IMs? And that is a big question. Uh, maybe the best way to answer that question would be to head over to squig.link slash list. This is a, a, a new website I've been working on, kind of still in a beta format. Um, but it's basically a list of all of the different IMs that I've reviewed and that I've listened to and that I have on Squiglink. And I've got them organized into different price buckets that are very commonly asked about. Like people ask me, what's the, what should I buy for under 150 bucks? Right. And, and I built this website to try and help answer that question in a better way, because I could tell you exactly what is my favorite under 500 bucks. My personal favorite Moondrop Blessing 2. Is that going to be your favorite, though? I don't know. And so that's part of why I built this website was to say, here are all the items that I've heard. You can filter it by price range. Look at, you know, 500 bucks and less. Um, and then I have links to uh, my reviews of those IMs. If I've reviewed them, I've got links to the frequency responses so you can take a look at them. And then I've got also scores that I give them. Um, 
And again, like as I kind of did here with the Ibeso, like not my favorite tuning, right? It's not, it's not gonna be my favorite I am under 200 bucks, under hundred bucks or whatever. But I hope that the way that I describe it lets you decide if that's actually what you want. If you actually want a mid bassy sounding I am, um, I said a lot of good things about the sound and you could take a look at it on a tool like Squigglink say, all right, this is categorized as a bassy uh, V-shaped sound signature. I uh, gave it three stars out of five. Here's his review. Here's how he described it. And hopefully you can make the decision for yourself on what will be best for you. So again, the short answer is the B Moondrop Blessing 2 is my favorite, but I know it's not going to be the favorite of everybody else. And so that's why I built squig.link slash list. Uh, and I'll probably make that a little bit easier to find in the future. Kevin Ng saying, I agree on the tips. For me, it's more about fit than tuning. The sound does change, but it's more related to how the IEMs fit into your ears. Yeah, and that's definitely how I find too. Um, yeah, I, you can see in like the frequency response graphs that I'm able to, to record that IEMs will change the, the frequency response. Um, but at that point, you really are just basically north of 4,000 Hertz, a lot of what you see in a frequency response graph is gonna be variable depending on your ear anatomy. And that's where like the shape of the ear tip and how it fits in your ear is gonna matter a lot more than necessarily what you see on a frequency response graph. Although it's still, still fun to look at. Darkness Deep asking, can I post where I bought the cable that I'm using on the Blessin 2? I can't do it right now because I'd have to go on AliExpress and look for it. But if you go to AliExpress.com, search for X-I-N-H-S. It's like Zins or something like that. X-I-N-H-S. Um, it's, a, it's a store that just sells a bunch of different cables and that's where I got it from. Take a look around. They don't have that many cables, so you should be able to find it. Uh, but otherwise, if that doesn't work out, I recommend joining the Discord server. Hit me up and I can definitely give you a link after the video. Rob Hock, oh no, I missed it. How many stars? So I gave the Ibeso three stars, which in my in my, in my my range of three stars, there can be like, I'll give it three stars or I can give it a solid three stars. I think the Ibeso ITL1X is a solid three stars. Uh, it's, it's a pretty decent set. Dominic P. Hi there. I really like your style. Keep rocking. Uh, I'm a bit new to IMs and high quality audio and have a bit off topic question. How important do you think bit perfect audio is? Ooh, you're, you're getting right into the controversial stuff. Um, whenever I see, I'll be honest. Yeah. Whenever I see people starting talking about bit perfect, like I know why you might go down that rabbit hole and why you're really trying to optimize everything, um, knowing that like, you know, your your audio player, your Android device or whatever is transcoding or, or upscaling your music to a different uh, sample rate than it was recorded in. Like that can be really irritating to, to, to picky folks like us. But if I'm perfectly honest, like I'm pretty confident that I cannot hear a difference. Um, so for me, bit perfect is just not a thing I spend any amount of time thinking about. Um, not to say like if if that's the thing that's important to you, go for it. And uh, if you think that you can hear a difference, I think that's that's awesome. Like it would be here's it. I'll say this. It falls into the realm of things that people say they can hear the difference in. And I don't necessarily disbelieve them. Like I think that they think that they're hearing a difference. But it's one of those things that it's just it's so when I try it, it just really falls into the realm of, uh, of, of, of placebo effect where like everything that I might think that I hear is exactly what I would have thought I would hear before I heard it, if that makes sense. And whenever I test myself with that sort of stuff in, in a bit of like kind of a blind AB setting, um, I just, I, any confidence that I had in being able to pick out the differences completely vanishes. Um, and so that's where, that's where I f feel like something like bit perfect, um, probably falls into is I, 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 you said you're just getting into audio. I personally would just not worry about that right now. Really, you know, focus on, if we're talking about kind of the audio chain and like the pieces that make a difference, right? So let's say you've got your original recording, 
you've got the, the mastering, and then you've got the file format, the bit rate, you've got the DAC, you've got the amplifier, you've got the cable, and then you've got the headphone. And then at the end, I guess you've got your ears. Um, the things that really make a big difference, I find, are the original recording quality, um, and then the, 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 the headphone, and then your ears. Those are like kind of the three that really make the biggest difference. Everything else there falls into just about placebo territory. I mean, there's ways to do a DAC bad. There's ways to do an amp bad. You can have a bad cable. Um, you can, you know, have a bad MP3 file that's a 64 kbps or something like that. Yes, you can do them bad. But for the most part, like I would try those things for yourself. And if you don't immediately hear a difference, I would not assume that it's because... Uh, because you're not like trained enough or anything like that. There might be differences there, but for the most part, it just kind of falls into the realm of placebo. The, again, original recording quality, that matters a ton. Uh, just some music out there is just, it just will not sound good no matter what you what you do to it. Um, you get something like, you know, an old Fleetwood Mac album and not everybody has to listen to Fleetwood Mac or whatever, um, or the Eagles or anything like that. There's a lot of good recordings out there that aren't Fleetwood Mac and the Eagles, but you get some of those recordings and then you compare that to something that's not recorded that well. And just no amount of swapping out your DAC or going for flack files or going for a bigger headphone is gonna make them sound as good as those really good quality recordings. Um, and again, the, the other end of that is the headphone, which makes a really, really big difference. Again, there's just a wide range of different tunings. Uh, different qualities that you should be able to pretty quickly hear the difference. Whether or not you prefer one or the other is, is another matter entirely, and that can take some time to figure out, but you should be able to obviously hear the differences between headphones. The differences between DACs, between amps, between uh, MP3 versus FLAC, between, you know, upsampled 48,000 kHz versus native 44.1, like, I don't know. I don't know. That was a long, a long answer. Uh, Darkness Deep saying, the other day I asked about the file BTR5, including, uh, excluding the DAC from the LG G5. It's the only DAC I have. Is it worth investing in the hip DAC to better enjoy Blessing 2? Um, Kind of along the same lines that I just talked about. I think probably not. Um, I haven't listened to the G5, so I don't really know that that particular phone. Um, the Blessing 2, let me step back actually. The reasons why I would push someone or I would suggest to somebody that they should look at something like the iFi hip DAC is if you want to power a set of headphones that um, requires a lot of power, right? Or you're listening on a phone or a device that doesn't have a DAC built into it, doesn't have a headphone jack built into it. Maybe you want the volume knob, like, and I'm not joking, like the, the volume knob itself, I find to be a reason to want a device like that. But if you're really just looking to get good sound out of your phone, I know the LG phones have decent DACs in them. And again, I haven't listened to them myself, so I, I, I could be missing something, but I don't think the iFi hip DAC will give your will make your Blessing 2 sound any better because the Blessing 2 doesn't need extra power. If anything, I found the hip DAC to be a little bit hissy with IEMs. I don't remember if the Blessing 2 is necessarily hissy with it because uh, the, the Blessing 2 isn't like super sensitive, but there's a good chance I, I would expect if I were to listen to the, the Blessing 2 on the hip DAC, I would expect to pick up some of that noise floor. Um, and so I don't and I, I don't think you're going to get anything additionally apart from volume out of the hip DAC. So, um, yeah, I personally, I personally would not go that route unless you want the volume knob. And I'm not kidding. That could be a pretty decent reason uh, to get a DAC amp. Kevin Ng saying, curiosity in the IAM realm, at what price point do I think the price to performance ratio peaks? And how does the sound quality at this price point compare to headphones in the same price range? Hmm. That's a big question too, um, for a lot of different reasons. Like one, 
I'll just say up front, like I haven't heard as many head, nearly as many headphones as, I, as I've heard I am. So my familiarity with headphones at a bunch of different price ranges is not nearly as extensive as it is with I am. So that will be pretty hard for me to answer that part of the question. The other part of the question, just at like what point does the price to performance ratio peak? Um, that's also really difficult for a lot of reasons because honestly, like something like the Moondrop SSR, 40 bucks. If you took away all my earphones and told me I could only have that, I wouldn't be super unhappy. You know, it's not the best at everything. Um, it's, it's definitely not tonally ideal, but I find it satisfying in a way that a lot of more expensive stuff is not. And honestly, like I could be pretty happy with the, the $40 SSR and like, the price to performance ratio does anything if i get pretty happy with the ssr for 40 bucks at 300 dollars for the blessing 2 am i 10 times more happy um i don't really think that that's a great way of uh, of, of figuring that out it's more it's really this is where it gets really difficult is it's going to come down to what do you want and what what is the price that you are willing to pay and that seems like I know it can be hard to, to imagine um, imagine a mindset outside of your own, but really like how much a person is willing to pay is a super, super uh, individual thing. And it's gonna depend a lot on, you know, their personal financial situation, of course, but also even beyond that, just like how much do you care? Um, you know, for a lot of people that are into the audio scene, a $300 Moondrop Blessing 2, not a cheap I am. It takes some saving up to, but like that makes sense. It's like, okay, $300 for Moondrop Blessing 2. I'll save up for that and I will accomplish um, just a really, really standout quality sound for the price. But for your average folks, like even if they're, you know, super well off and wealthy, spending $300 on a pair of earphones will sound stupid. So that's where this question is really pretty complicated. I'll say from my personal perspective, the Moondrop Blessing 2 is just like the best price to performance ratio I think out there. It's around 300 bucks. And there's, I would say it's my favorite tuning out of all the IMs that I've heard, uh, including stuff that costs like 3000 bucks. And it's not exactly perfect. The, the treble quality on it, I think lets it down a little bit. And yes, as you spend more money, you can start to get even more and more picky about what you want in your sound. Um, something like the Moondrop S8, 700 bucks. It's almost, it's about twice as much. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's maybe a little bit, it's, oh, I'd say it's quite a bit better treble. The, the treble quality on that I would say is next level. Um, but is it twice as good? I don't know. That's again, it gets, it gets really difficult at that point, but I would say, you know, there's just, there's our handful of earphones out there that are really just good price to performance ratio and you have to make the choice for yourself, does it make sense to spend $300 on a pair of earphones? Does it make sense to spend $1,000 on a pair of earphones? Does it make sense to spend $6,000 on a pair of earphones? And I heard a $6,000 pair of earphones just yesterday. And I gotta say, they sounded pretty good, but I, I just, I can't, I can't imagine. You could buy a Mazda Miata for 6,000 bucks. Tom Herbert asking Moondrop Illumination. I can't imagine it's much better than a Starfield, even though it's way more expensive because it's a single dynamic. Um, I like this. I like the Illumination better than the Starfield and the Aria. Um, a lot of it's going to come down to more to the the tuning though, and less about the the technicalities. Like I think the Illumination is kind of weak in terms of the technical performance, um, which also I would kind of say about the Aria and the Starfield. Uh, to a lesser extent because they're so much cheaper and they make more sense where they are but i also don't think the illumination is necessarily the the tone like it's not kind of in the same tonal family as those other ones it's a little different um, but i also would not say it's because it's a single dynamic driver because there are some other single dynamic drivers that sound quite a bit different and i would recommend as upgrades even if not the illumination Oh, Darkness Deep, cool. You found the cable store on AliExpress, excellent. Um, yeah, just expect if you haven't ordered from AliExpress before, expect that it's gonna take 
two, three, maybe even four weeks for something to ship. That's just, that's the way it be. Um, but it's kind of a nice surprise. Once, once you get into the habit of periodically buying something on AliExpress and you forget about it, and then a couple weeks later it shows up, you're like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a nice fun surprise. You are Gene saying when streaming through Bluetooth, if you can't hear the difference between Aptex and no Aptex, you should probably have your hearing checked, which I think is an unnecessarily aggressive way to say that. Um, yeah, I think I haven't, I honestly have not done a ton of testing of different Bluetooth codecs, but I do think it would be worth um, spending some time trying to find a way to test that in the first place, it's actually kind of difficult because just by swapping Bluetooth codecs, you're probably going to end up disconnecting your device. It's going to go through a repairing or a re reconnection setup, um, and then it's going to pause your music. It, basically, the swip, swapping between different uh, codecs, if you can find the way to do it, there's going to be a good five, maybe 10 seconds of dead time. And that amount of time makes it really hard to hear the difference between something like Aptex and let's say AAC. Um, I did do, you know, recently my uh, my comparison between AAC and Apple lossless and I could not hear a difference. Now it wasn't over Bluetooth, but my understanding is that the way that AAC Bluetooth works, at least on Apple devices, is it basically just transfers that raw AAC file over Bluetooth. There's no additional transcoding. So I think if you're hearing an obvious difference between AAC and Aptex, it's probably more to, um, it's probably more to some other problems or maybe some uh, issues in the uh, uh, um, the stack. I'm getting an error here on YouTube, which is new. Hold on folks. Just waiting here to see if the YouTube stuff clears up. All right, well, um, let me try and knock out these first couple of, or these last couple of questions and then wrap this stream up because it looks like YouTube's arguing with me. Um, but yeah, a uh, Rob Hawk asking which 6,000 earphones it was the Oriolus tra la 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 or something like that. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it was an Oriolus set. And uh, Holly boy, no, I have not tried an LG phone with a quad deck. I, um, I feel like it's probably a little bit overhyped, but it also probably sounds pretty decent. Nikki asking, is the upper mid range and the blessing too harsh or just slightly forward? Uh, it's really going to depend on your your personal ear and your 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 personal preference for upper mid range. I would say the upper mid range and the blessing two is forward, but it's not as aggressive as something like the uh, the Moondrop SSR. Um, I would say for my preferences, it's in line with exactly where I want it to be. But because there's not a lot of bass, some folks might find it a little bit too forward. All right, folks, that was the end of the questions. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for sticking through the uh, the YouTube issues here. Um, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, you just enjoyed hanging out, please do hit the like button down below. Helps me out, helps other people find the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ding the YouTube bell, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and also, I you know always recommend people join the Discord server, which I do have linked in the description down below. Uh, we can chat there, or you can just hang around, and I'll catch you on the next super review. Have a good week. <laughs>